was born in uh, Poland, in Lodz, and they came to the country in the beginning of the war, in uh, 1940. I grew up in Tel Aviv. I came from, I, from when I came to the country, I didn't know not one word in Hebrew. But uh, they sent me to school, and the first thing uh, with this, I started learning some words. Because, but after the first year, I went, uh, I knew Hebrew quite well. It took me several months, and uh, I. The moment I came to the country, of course, I wanted to be like everybody. And one of the best things to be like everybody was to be a member of Agana. So I was 12, 14 when I became, uh, joined the Hagana and I was very proud of myself. We were quite afraid. It was the middle of the war. And we still didn't know all that is happening there, but we knew that it's horrible. And we were simply we were rather afraid, and we knew the, we were lucky that we were here. But, but from the class I was learning in school in Poland, there were 25 children in my class. I, two of us remained after the war. All the rest were killed. So I knew that it's... And we didn't know how it will be if he, he, he will if we'll succeed in getting alive here. It was the middle of war. I don't want to forget when the Germans were near on the, in Africa. Uh, Tobruk and all this. We were rather afraid. My parents wanted to buy a car, but uh, in order to run away, if, there is, if we have to run away. But I remember telling them where we, we run to. During this time, in, I was a member of an organization in Shomer Sayer. In, in our group, they came an Arab boy from Yafo, and he wanted to, take, to be a member of our group, and we took him. Probably, I think today, probably they sent him a bit to, to look for everything to be in, inside. But then we didn't think about it. It was very nice. Why shouldn't he go with us? We tried to make him a member of Haganah. <laughs> but uh, in, the, in Haganah they told us everything is enough. Didn't hate the Arabs during, even during the war. I was quite sure that it is war. Every war is war. But after the war it will be all right. We'll sit together. And I didn't think I never hated them. In Haganah, first of all, it was in winter, I was in school. And we arranged in school that no examinations will be on Sunday, because on Shabbat we are busy with Haganah. So Haganah was very important, and of course I was very happy about it. And. Uh, I don't, we were sent quite often to put some, uh, uh, some, uh, to hang, hang things on the walls and so things like this, and we were very happy about it. The most important was uh, not to be caught by the British, and uh, generally the arrangement was we were always going to a boy and a girl, and uh, if the uh, and British and so and soldier or a policeman or somebody is coming, we are standing and kissing. Love it. Yes. And if there were only two girls, we used to go to to enter some some back some backyard and they start uh, kissing very loudly. Yes, we were afraid of the British, and we thought 
they were the, supposed to be the enemies. The, I, we, then somehow we didn't think about Arabs as enemies. We didn't think about uh, what hap will happen after the war. We were, I was a child. And we thought there are Arabs and of course they will, they will be here always. There will be a war because they, they don't like us to be to catch the, too much land and so on. So there will be trouble, there will be war, but afterwards we'll sit together and everything will be just as it was always. And not for a moment did I think that maybe they won't be here. I remember quite well what I was sensed and it was I finished my school just then and I went to Negev to I was in a kibbutz in Negev. We started working and at night we were sat near the telephone and near the radio and we heard what is happening. And now we have to go to Tel Aviv. It's impossible to be here. We somehow we succeeded in making somebody take us with a car and some ten of us went and enter a car and we went to Tel Aviv and started da dancing in the street. I was sure that I'm going to live all my life in kibbutz. I had thoughts like this and I wanted on a new kibbutz, my own kibbutz, not an old kibbutz. Because it was very funny, we tried to there was a very nice group that wanted us uh, to to main, to join join the kibbutz. We said no. You are old people. You are twenty two, twenty three. How can we stand with such old people? We are seventeen, and we want some people like us. Ashmer say was the. Uh, uh, Zionist organizations were very, very supposed to be very left wing, very, very much left wing, very, very light with a very good relations with the Arabs and so on. We are visiting in Arab villages and so on, and it was very nice and very, very happy. And the most horrible thing about it was then when the war started and the Arabs were full of a town out of their villages, not one kibbutz said that they don't want to take their land. Not one kibbutz. Everybody was very happy to steal their land. Zionist was then very important because we heard what is happening in Europe. And we thought we must fight, we must have our own place, we must fight, otherwise they will kill us. The only chance of staying alive is here. I was then in Rahama, in the village in Kibbutz in Negev. And the beauty, just, just this day, I had some guests and I took them to visit all the places around. And the, the places around were near, near the Arab villages. And the, uh, the people in Kibbutz were crazy. thought, are you crazy? Today you go there. And they ran after us, go back home, bring quickly, quickly. Don't dare go into the, any village. And it was the beginning of the war. During the war, there is a in Galil, we left the Negev and we went to Galil. Most of the war I was in Enamifat, a place, just quite a lot of four months I spent in Hiam. Hiam was a small kibbutz, new one that was during the war, he was completely cut off. We got everything, even water from the air, from aeroplanes through the water to us. In the beginning, it was the village, the neighbors. You can't speak with the neighbors. 
Then there was the, the start of the union that the, we need help, and they sent a group, uh, some 40 people to as uh, help to uh, to him, and they were killed on the way. They were this uh, group was uh, surrounded by the Arabs. The, fir the first car succeeded in getting to him. Only the, the driver was alive, the second driver was killed, sitting next to him, but the rest of people in the car succeeded in getting. The last car succeeded in getting back to... And all the cars in the middle, there were three or four cars, everybody was killed. So when then we knew that we are on our own, and anything they can say, 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 say to us from the air is all right. We are getting food and things like this, but we are completely cut off. Then there was fighting on the way. We always uh, took part in the fighting on the way. We were sitting around the, in the road, so to help people that coming to us, but uh, it was rather da dangerous. Several people in the, during the, this time were killed in the kibbutz. Uh, I guess that they took, that I, uh, took place, took my place, one day was killed. There was, uh, we told her not to look out. But uh, she was sitting with in with her, her, her head out of the, the place there, and uh, she was killed. I was a soldier too. It was very happy to be girls there. There were about, about a hundred boys and eleven girls. So of course nobody was as important as us. The siege ended at. Uh, the war started and the, the Arabs were, were thrown out of several villages, villages on the way and I went to, back, to, back to Tel Aviv because my parents didn't know where I am during the siege. They would have been very worried and very unhappy. So I found the but when I went to Hiam, I knew that it will be not so, so simple. So I wrote some 20 letters or something like this and let them with my friends to send every week a letter. So they got letters from me, from my enemy first, and they knew that everything is all right and I am in, in a safe place. And only afterwards I told them where I have been, really been. Yes, but there was uh, later in, during the war, after we have been out of the siege of... Uh, and I wanted... To, the, the war started in Negev, and there was war, war about Beersheba. And of course I wanted to be there. Of course. Something is happening. It's very important. How can I sit so far? far far away, I must go there. I succeeded uh, convincing somebody with a car to take me to Beersheba. And then we came to Beersheba, and of course it was a small country, and everybody you knew, there were people you knew from Haganah and so on. And we came, wonderful, you came just on time. And tomorrow we are showing out the people, the Arabs from Beersheba. You are going to help. Of course, I'm going to help. And I, the next day I got a car, I got a, a gun, and we were standing, so we, were, we prepared several buses. I think there was 10 or 12 buses, and we called, we are, all the people, Arabs from Beersheba to come to the buses and to enter the buses. They were going to to Aza, to Gaza. 
from I was sending like everybody with a girl with a gun. So nobody will try to run away and all of them will go into the cars and go to Gaza. And they are in Gaza, in Gaza today, until today. Not them, their parents, their children and their grandchildren. I haven't been much in Tel Aviv because uh, from kibbutz, from uh, the Galil, I went straight to near this straight to the Negev, but uh, and then I come, came back. But I was uh, visiting all the time with my parents, and they spoke with uh, on the telephone. In Tel Aviv, it was rather not very uh, easy. They didn't get much food. There was trouble with food and trouble with uh, there was uh, um, Tel Aviv got several bombs. The place where I today I was am standing there with women in black. This was it was just the place. So the house that was there was bombed and nothing remained of it. It, it, it was a war. No, I was there only for a short time, only to see what is happening. But I only helped threw out the Palestinians from Beersheba. I'm not very happy about it, but it was a war. There was a radio, and in, I was, most of the time I was in a kibbutz, not one kibbutz, but one of the kibbutzim, and we always had a radio. When I was in here, we couldn't get a radio, but uh, we had to uh, buy, well, how do you call it? Short. Morse. We got. By, by Morse, we got, oh. we got uh, the, uh, the news. We felt we were, didn't know what was going to happen. We were quite sure, at least I was sure. I don't know about everybody, that uh, it will be like it was before. They are going away for a short time. I was very, very shocked when there was a, a, an officer of a kibbutz where I was, went to a Palestinian village and told them to go away for some days because there are some unpleasant people that came and want to make trouble. And then we will we'll come back to the village and everything will be all right. I heard it and I thought he was telling the truth. Then they were really run, went away and on the same day the village was demolished. Some the village was demolished until the last house and I was very shocked. I believed that he's telling the truth and that He's, how can he tell them to go away when if, if their village is going to believe to believe demolished? But I believe that still everything will be all right later. When the war ends, everything will be all right. The Palestinian village, village, I don't remember, it was near El Amifaz, near the kibbutz El Amifaz. They were the nearest neighbor. I was in Kibbutz, part of it, I was in in Elam first, and then I was in Hiam. In Hiam, we didn't hear anything about the other parts of the war. We knew what is happening with us. And it was not very same, um, not very pleasant, but you know, when people are afraid, they try to not to let anybody know about the being afraid. Everything is all right. Everything will be all right. And we spoke about every day with the war, were new jokes, and somebody fall asleep during his uh, uh, when he was there or standing in order. So we laughed, laughed at him and things like this. Everything that was, uh, we could do in as a joke, 
everything was made, made in, in, the, in the room. After the siege, I went to Tel Aviv. As, as far as I, as I was concerned, the war ended. Because from then on, I was not in the middle of action. More often, I, I was officially, I was not, never in the army. But because I was in the army together with the kibbutz. So I got a letter in the papers from the army several years later. Because then I was not, nobody knew about us. In the beginning, I had, I had a, a big gun, the British gun, very heavy. And we were, we were supposed to sleep with it, even. never to leave it alone, never to be far from God. When you were going to sleep, sleep with the gun under the wall, your bed. So to be on the safe side. But uh, later we got a um, small gun and uh, not so, so heavy. The one that was, the, um, the British gun was very heavy. It was 12 kilos or something like this. And really not very pleasant. The machine again, it was not mine. It was um, belonging to the Duilchiam. We had this uh, uh, first phrase. We called her Shorka. In Hebrew, it's the black one. And we, it was, uh, we needed the gun. And if it's not all right, uh, it will be not, uh, we can be very easily killed. So we tried to be on all right with the gun. What can you, when you want to be all right with somebody, you give him a bit of cake or something. So why, why not to give it to Schwarzrose or to Schorka? We put a bit of cake and a bit of chocolate or something. Schorka, this today you will be all right. To, today you will be nice. It was in Akko. It was in the beginning of war, before I went to Ihiam. Before it, I was in, in enemy first, in the kibbutz enemy first, and from enemy first, the, uh, they conquered Akko. Akko, Akko, how do you want to call the, uh, to call the place? I was uh, fighting then, but then it was not very important. And uh, we were, after conquering, conquer, Ako we started running around looking at everything and uh, and one of the I got uh, it was the first time in fact they I, I saw the active part of the war until then war was dangerous war was but it was not ugly both sides were we were fighting and the Arabs were fighting more or less. It's the same position. Then we were in Akko. Most of the Arabs left Akko. They were thrown out. But part of them ran away by, the, by themselves. They ran to the... To, the they ran to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to Lebanon. Most of them ran to Lebanon. And they we are we went and we were moving around the village in Akko and looking, and there was the, 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 the door was open, and we entered, and there was coffee on the table, and pit, 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 pit on the table, but nobody in the place. And on the wall, on the, on the under the table, there was a pair of small shoes, shoes of a child. And I understood from this that they ran away in the middle of the, of the meal, they were eating, and then somebody told them to go away quickly. And then I ran away, I didn't have time to put on the shoes of the baby. Child, it was small shoes for a small child. 
and it was a, this part of the war was it was I have seen it the first time. This war is not a, a war of soldiers. It was it's a war of people, of children, and I started crying. The child needs his shoes. We need to, to send the shoes to the child. Where can, can he be? The rest of the war, it was many, most of it was in Tel Aviv. In the beginning, we were very happy about it. But after a short time, I started being not very happy. Where are they? The Palestinians. We, once we come back, and every day they say, we are speaking about us, uh, are they coming back, are not they coming back, what will happen now? And several villi the villages were standing em empty, and so it started, people started living in the villages, the people, with the new, new settlers, new people in the county, they came, new, uh, Every day became new people from Europe, and uh, they will live in the villages, will they? It was so strange, and we were not sure what will happen. In the beginning, we still thought it will take several months on, and we, some, somehow there will be some arrangement, some something, some sort of peace. We will make with them. We are waiting until today. I remember. I I like jokes and I like laughter. And of course, what I remember best are several jokes and several things that didn't. Uh, there was this day that we tried to. We went out. With uh, then uh, I had this uh, small gun, no, not real gun, no, half gun. How do you call it? Uh, we shall it. Uh, uh, how do uh, how, how how do the, we call it? Sub uh, stand. 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 Stand sub was uh, very miserable gun, but uh, everybody got a stand. Stand. I was walked with a boy. And uh, we, we saw somebody, some person, a Palestinian boy standing there. So we st took our stems and started shot shooting. And he, push he put himself down on the land and heard, oh, it's Stan. He is more, uh, too far from us. He got up, cleaned himself, and he uh, you know, Told us uh, shalom, shalom, <laughs> and ran away. No, no, it's always the head is always full of stories, but I don't remember. I remember this uh, uh, demolishing the railway. The railway I was in the. Uh, we used. I was in. Uh, had uh, I was uh, ill. I had the. Uh, Febra and uh, malaria, and I was uh, no place. I couldn't go to work, so in place of work, I was sent to keep uh, to look uh, to keep the people, Palestinians, working, demolishing the railway. And uh, one day, there was generally we went with the uh, uh, with railway. We were standing outside, and the Palestinians were inside, and we were standing outside in the window and, and, uh, and uh, with guns, so they won't run away and they will come and work. But one day there was no, no rain and no railway. The railway was not all right. And I was sent with a group of Palestinians, I think about 20 of them, to go with them straight to the railway, to the station, to work. It was so idiotic. I was one girl with a gun and some 20 people. They were so afraid. 
and I was afraid of them, and everybody was running away. And, but nothing happened. They came to the railway and started demolishing it, and uh, I was very happy. It was a big hero. I succeeded in doing my work. <laughs>